Hey techies, near the end of one of the most legendary console runs of all time, HAL or HAL Laboratory released what would become an iconic staple in Nintendo's first home console. Following up the surprising success of Kirby's Dream Land for the Game Boy, Nintendo commissioned HAL to release a bigger, better game with a little pink puffball star, Kirby. Kirby's Adventure released in 1993, not only cemented Kirby's place in the gaming pantheon, but also showcased the creative prowess of HAL Laboratory and Nintendo. It brought a breath of fresh air to the platforming genre, offering innovative gameplay mechanics and a vibrant world that resonated with players of all ages. Today, we're here to discuss Kirby's adventure and how it proved that even with the release of the Super Nintendo, the NES still had a little gas left in the tank. As always, please forgive me if I butcher some of these names. Let's continue. Kirby's adventure was the brainchild of Masahiro Sakurai, a young designer at HAL Laboratory, and was directed by Satoru Awata, who would later become the president of Nintendo. The game's development began as an ambitious project to create a follow-up to Kirby's Dream Land, which debuted on the Game Boy. Unlike its monochromatic predecessor, Kirby's Adventure aimed to utilize the full-color palette of the NES, pushing the hardware to its limits. The development team faced numerous challenges in bringing Kirby's Adventure to life. The NES, being an aged console, had technical limitations that required creative solutions. To create the game's vibrant graphics, smooth animations, and expansive levels, the team employed advanced programming techniques. One of the key innovations was to use the sprite multiplexing, which allowed for more complex and detailed character animations than typically seen on the NES. This technique enabled Kirby's fluid movements and the dynamic environments of Dreamland. Moreover, the team had to overcome memory constraints inherent to the NES. It was one of the largest games ever created for the console, with a significant amount of data dedicated to graphics, music, and level design. The developers cleverly used bank switching, a method of dynamically loading and unloading data to and from the cartridge's memory banks to manage the game's extensive content without sacrificing performance. This ingenuity ensured that players experienced seamless transitions and consistent gameplay quality. Sound and music were also pivotal in Kirby's adventure, contributing to the immersive experience. The game's composer, Jun Ishikawa, crafted a memorable soundtrack that complemented the visual and gameplay elements. The music not only set the tone for each level, but also became iconic in its own right, with themes that are still celebrated by fans today. Despite all these hurdles, the game was completed in 18 months, a testament to the dedication and skill of the development team. The final product was a polished, ambitious game that stood out in the NES library. This accomplishment was particularly remarkable given the relatively small size of the development team compared to today's standards. Each member played a crucial role, from programming to design art and sound, contributing to a cohesive and groundbreaking final product. With the release in May of 1993, Kirby's Adventure was a late addition to the NES library, arriving when the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, SNES, was already in many households. Nevertheless, it received critical acclaim and commercial success, demonstrating that the NES had still plenty of life left in its tank. The game's innovative mechanics, charming aesthetic, and engaging gameplay ensured its place as a classic. By pushing the boundaries of what the NES could achieve, it not only revitalized interest in the console, but also set new standards for what platformers could aspire to be. Kirby's Adventure stood out for its vibrant and colorful graphics, a stark contrast to the more subdued tones of many NES games. The visual design of the game was a kaleidoscope of creativity, bringing Dreamland to life with lush environments, imaginative enemies, and of course, the adorable Kirby. The game's art style was both simple and sophisticated, which each sprite meticulously crafted to convey personality and emotion. The attention to detail in the backgrounds and character animations created a vivid world that players could lose themselves in, making each level a new adventure. Kirby's design itself was a masterstroke of simplicity and charm. His round, pink appearance was not only visually appealing, but also made him instantly recognizable. This design choice contributed to Kirby's enduring popularity as it was easy for players to connect with the character. The art direction of Kirby's Adventure set a new standard for platformers, proving that even within the technical constraints of the NES, it was possible to create a visually stunning and immersive experience. Pink was also a surprise for much of the team, as during development of Kirby's Dreamland, Kirby had been white due to the fact that Game Boy had such a limited color palette. During the development of Kirby's Adventure, Sakurai made it clear that Kirby should be pink to the team, Nintendo legend Shigeru Miyamoto apparently thought that Kirby would be more of a yellow color initially, 
but agreed that the choice of pink was much more distinct and led to a more memorable character. That was a great choice, because now Kirby is affectionately known as Nintendo's Pink Puffball. Kirby's adventure introduced a host of gameplay mechanics that not only defined the game but also the franchise itself and the platforming genre as a whole. At its core, Kirby's adventure was a traditional side-scrolling platformer, but it distinguished itself with unique features that set it apart from its contemporaries. One of the most revolutionary mechanics in Kirby's adventure was the introduction of the copy ability. Unlike Kirby's Dream Land, where Kirby could only inhale and exhale enemies, Kirby's adventure allowed him to absorb their powers. By inhaling specific foes, Kirby could gain their abilities, ranging from fire breathing to sword wielding to turning into a stone. This mechanic added a layer of strategy and variety to the gameplay as players had to decide which abilities to use in different situations. Players might use the beam attack to shoot enemies behind walls, use a spark ability to shield themselves from enemies if they were low at health, or use a laser to ricochet the laser beam off an angled surface to hit out of reach bombs or switches to open up new areas. The copy ability not only diversified the gameplay but also encouraged exploration. Each level was designed with multiple paths and secrets that could be accessed with specific abilities. This mechanic turned each playthrough into a unique experience as players experimented with different powers to uncover hidden areas and bonuses. It was a masterstroke of a game design, transforming Kirby from a simple platformer protagonist into a versatile and dynamic hero capable of letting players express their creativity. So Kirby's adventure featured seven main worlds, each comprising several stages that culminated in a boss battle. The level design was both creative and varied, with each world offering distinct themes and challenges. From the peaceful landscapes of Vegetable Valley to the perilous heights of Butter Building, the game's environments were crafted to keep players engaged and entertained. As players beat levels, they would see new areas of each world's map open up, and there were even secret areas that could be reached by finding secret exits or activating secret switches in levels. This made the map feel like it was capable of revealing anything on a player's first time through the game. The game also incorporated many games and bonus stages, providing a break from the main quest and adding to the replay value. These mini games, such as Crane Fever and Quick Draw, offered players the chance to earn extra lives and points, further enhancing the overall experience. The diversity in level design ensured that players were constantly faced with new obstacles and opportunities, maintaining a fresh and exciting gameplay experience from start to finish. Now, the boss battles were another highlight, each requiring players to utilize their skills and copy abilities effectively. Each boss had unique attack patterns and weaknesses that players had to learn and exploit. These battles were not just about brute force though. They demanded strategy and quick reflexes, making them memorable and satisfying to the conqueror. Memorable bosses like Wispy Woods and Meta Knight and King Didi each presented unique challenges. For instance, Meta Knight's encounters emphasized quick reflexes and precision, while King Didi's brute strength required players to master dodging and counterattacking. These encounters added a layer of depth to the game as players had to adapt their strategies and abilities to overcome each foe. Kirby's Adventure was praised for its fluid controls and responsive gameplay. I remember that because it was one of the most addictive games I've ever played. That's how fun it was. So Kirby's movements, including his ability to float and fly, were smooth and intuitive, making the gameplay accessible to players of all skill levels. The control scheme was simple, yet effective, allowing for precise movements and actions. This accessibility was one of the game's strengths, as it welcomed both novice players and seasoned gamers alike. The game's pacing was also finely tuned, balancing moments of intense action with periods of exploration and puzzle solving. This balance kept the gameplay engaging and prevented it from becoming too monotonous. Players were constantly rewarded for their curiosity and experimentation, creating a compelling loop that encouraged them to keep playing. It demonstrated that a game could be both accessible and deep, offering a rich experience that appealed to a broader audience. Its inventive mechanics, combined with its charming presentation and engaging gameplay, ensured that it would be remembered as a classic. Kirby's Adventure did more than just introduce players to a vibrant world and innovative mechanics, it laid a foundation for an enduring franchise that continues to evolve and captivate audiences. The game's influence on subsequent titles in the Kirby series is profound, establishing core elements that have become synonymous with the Pink Puffball's adventures. 
Now even me as a child remembers the ability to copy everyone else's ability in the game. I would venture to say that that's probably the most significant contribution of Kirby's adventure to the entire franchise. Titles like Kirby Superstar and Kirby's Return to Dreamland continue to build upon the foundation set in Kirby's Adventure, offering even more diverse and creative ways to use the copy ability. In the latest game, Kirby and the Forgotten Lands, Kirby's Mouthful Mode is a unique take on the copy ability, with Kirby swallowing large objects and being able to take control of them throughout the level space. The game's success also reinforced the importance of innovative gameplay mechanics in the series. Each subsequent Kirby game has strived to introduce new features while retaining the charm and accessibility that define Kirby's adventure. This balance of innovation and tradition has become a hallmark of the franchise, ensuring that each new game entry feels fresh yet familiar. Kirby's Adventure set a high standard for visual and aesthetic design in the franchise. The game's vibrant colors, imaginative level design, and charming character animations became defining features of the series. Future Kirby games have consistently aimed to create visually appealing worlds that draw players in and make each new adventure memorable. The character design of Kirby himself, with his simple yet expressive appearance, has remained largely unchanged since its release. This consistency has helped solidify Kirby's identity and appeal, making him one of the most recognizable characters in gaming. The game's art style has influenced not only subsequent Kirby titles, but also other games within HAL Laboratory and beyond, showcasing the impact of his creative direction. Kirby's Adventure also played a crucial role in expanding the lore and universe of the Kirby series. It introduced characters and settings that would become staples in future games, iconic characters like Meta Knight and King Dedede, who made their debut in Kirby's Adventure, have become central figures in the franchise, each with their own backstories and roles in the series' narrative. Beyond the Kirby series, Kirby's Adventure influenced the broader landscape of game design. Its innovative mechanics, particularly the copy ability, inspired other developers to experiment with similar ideas in their own games. The game's blend of accessibility and depth showed that it was possible to create games that appealed to both casual and hardcore players a philosophy that has informed many successful titles in the years since. Its success also highlighted the importance of creativity and innovation in game design. This game remains a timeless classic, celebrated for its creativity, charm, and gameplay innovation. Its influence on the Kirby franchise is undeniable, shaping the series' core mechanics, visual style, and narrative elements. The game's legacy extends beyond the confines of its own series, inspiring countless developers and leaving an indelible mark on the history of video gaming. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, a like is a great free way to help support what we do here. You can also subscribe to keep up to date on all of our videos. And if you want to see other videos we've made talking about some of our favorite stuff from our childhood, feel free to click on one of the videos on the screen now. We hope you join us next time as we take another trip through the tech timeline.